All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. This is Rosh, and you're watching FM9 Basics. This is a tutorial series I'm putting together to help users uh, program and dial in their Fractal Audio Systems FM9 units. This video series can, of course, be used in conjunction with my previous video series, FM3 Basics and AxeFX Basics. All the strategies and tips that I have uh, gone over in those other video series can, of course, be used with the FM9. Um, with maybe some slight modifications. So check out those tutorials at the rest of this YouTube channel as well as axfexbasics.com and fm3basics.com. So a little about myself, once again, my name is Rosh and I'm a guitar player and guitar tech out here in the LA area. I build and program a lot of guitar rigs for a lot of different clients. So my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Dweezil Zappa, um, Melissa Etheridge, Perfect Circle, and more. So this video in particular is, um, or these videos in particular are uh, my way of giving back to the Fractal community. Um, and I just wanna show some strategies and tips and tricks of how to dial in all the Fractal Audio Systems products. So um, this video in particular is gonna be covering a lot of uh, volume and gain staging issues that I see that are very common in a lot of uh, presets that I see from a lot of different clients. So a typical scenario that I get from a lot of different clients is, hey, I built a preset, but when I turn and turn on and off effects, um, especially time-based ones, I get all these level jumps. Or, hey, I have a preset because we're playing a song and then I need to you know, have a really quiet bridge, but then a really loud guitar solo section and then maybe the chorus needs to be louder than the verse and I'm having a little trouble getting my preset you know, to change volume between different scenes and, um, you know, how do I do that? So I'm going to show a couple of different strategies and a couple of different um, common, you know, pitfalls that I see a lot of people run into. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to call this uh, volume issues, I guess. And I'm going to build a real basic preset. Quick build. We're going to do the input block, output block, amp and a cab. And we're going to go connect them with a shunt like this, okay? This isn't gonna be much of like a tone building video. Um, this is gonna be more just, you know, again, volume issues and some common things that I see. Uh, so let's reset this block. Let's reset that one too. And um, yeah, we can use the deluxe reverb. I usually like a semi-clean, clean-ish deluxe reverb uh, somewhere around there. Let's pick a, a deluxe reverb cabinet. That one's usually fine. And we'll bring the low cut up to about 80 to 100. That's usually a pretty good ballpark for the low end. Some people have asked me, hey, you know, I see you sometimes doing it in the preamp section. Can you do it in the cab section, vice versa? Yeah, I, I do both. Um, doesn't really matter to me. Um, you, you can notice some slight tonal differences, um, mainly because of the default slope of what they are. This is 12 dB per octave. This is 6 dB but there are options, of course. Um, so we got this sound, let's save it. Let's just check out where it is. Okay, definitely needs to come up in volume. I usually shoot for, you know, this kind of like unity gain area right there. So let's bring up the level a little bit. Okay, that's probably fine. Um, all right, so the first issue that I usually see is uh, most presets are gonna have a reverb in it. So the user will drop in a reverb. Um, this is the default medium room reverb. And they're gonna start messing with the mix and they're gonna start messing with the level to get their reverb sound where they want it. But then of course it starts affecting the dry signal, which is just the, um, you know, the regular guitar sound coming in. And then of course, if you bypass the reverb, then there's also all kinds of level jumps. So for example, there's our sound. Now let's say you wanted more reverb, so you start cranking up the mix. And then maybe even more, maybe adjust the time a little bit. And then when you bypass the reverb, you know, there might be some slight volume, you know, discrepancies or whatever. Um, so in a previous video that I made, um, I talked about the bypass mode as well as running effects in series or parallel. So I would definitely recommend watching that but I will review some of those things in this video as well. So the first thing that you wanna check out is um, if you are gonna keep the reverb on the whole time, which a lot of guitar players generally do, um, try dialing stuff in with the through first. Um, 
so what that means is that when this is bypassed, you know, the signal is going to go all the way through. Now, um, a very uh, useful setting for reverbs is 50% mix and 3 dB for the level. And what you end up doing is you use the input gain to adjust how much or how little of the reverb sound you want. Okay, so I'm just going to set a little bit less of the reverb right here. And I'm going to engage the reverb. And I'm going to use, I'm going to dial it in using this input gain knob. And the first thing you'll notice is that when I play, there's not going to be any significant level jump because these two settings really help with, you know, making sure that the bypass volume and the engaged volume of the reverb are equivalent. Okay, so if you need less reverb, you just pull that input gain back down. And this can be even more apparent, let's say, using like a really long, huge reverb. So let's use uh, this cavern reverb. Um, so, and then I'll just turn this up to an obnoxious level. Now, one thing you'll notice right away is when you use the bypass mode for through while this is running in series, there's no reverb trails. So for example, if I hit the reverb and then I bypass it, cuts off that reverb tail. Now, so some, that can be a really kind of strange sound, especially if you're used to a reverb that may trail. So now you wanna check out some of the other effects um, uh, bypass modes. So. When you're running things in series, series, that means there's no parallel shunts, nothing like that, um, and you want the reverb trails to happen, first off, make sure that your setup, you have spillover, okay? Um, I usually just do all or delay and reverb. Um, make sure that's just on again. If you're switching between presets, it'll have some spillover. If you're switching between scenes, it'll spill over the reverb. And then the other thing is, of course, use the mute effects in or mute effects out right there. Now, mute effects in basically means that as your signal travels into the reverb block, if you bypass it, um, what, what it's going to do is any subsequent signal from the guitar being sent into this reverb block as it's being bypassed is going to be ignored. So Basically, this allows trails to happen. So for example, if we hit this reverb, you can see that even though the reverb's bypass, the trails continue on. So I'll do that one more time. Bypass, trails still happen. Now, if we do mute effects out, for example, what's gonna happen is this is kind of similar to doing the through. As you can hear, no reverb trails. Because mute effects out means that as the signal is entering the reverb block, anything that is like in the reverb block as it's being bypassed is gonna be cut off here at the output stage. So, real simple heuristic to remember is mute effects in, in series, you get trails. Mute effects out in series, you do not get trails. Okay. And again, these settings are really great for making sure that there is, you know, consistent volume and leveling through that. So that has to do with the reverb block. Now, if you look at a lot of presets that I build, I generally run everything in parallel. So I'm going to pull that reverb block down. I'm going to reconnect the shunt and then I'm going to connect it here. So now I have two signal paths right here. Now this gets into the second thing that I see a lot when people start using reverb or delays or whatever in parallel. So depending on your bypass mode right here, what's gonna happen is that you have a signal splitting being sent into this shunt, and then you have another signal being sent into whatever you put down here, and then they are being summed right there. So if you, for example, let's just say have two shunts right there, you're effectively doubling your signal right here, which can be about a six dB jump. So if I disconnect these really quick and play, you'll notice that's the volume level we've been working with. But if I connect it, check out what happens. 
Yikes. Okay. So we definitely don't want that. Um, and this is a very, 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 very common thing I see with a lot of different presets um, that have a lot of leveling issues. Then what happens is, of course, if you're trying to add, let's say, a block in here that's running in parallel, and then you don't set these correct, you're going to notice also, again, a lot of leveling issues. So you can see right there, we're having a ton of volume. Um, your preset gain staging is all over the place. So let's talk about running a time-based effect in parallel now. So I'm going to reset this block. And we're going to go back to the default settings. Okay, So it usually defaults to medium room, and you get this kind of thing. The first thing you want to do if you're running anything in parallel is that you want to set your um, effect bypass mode to either mute in or mute out. Okay, So let's do mute in first. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to set your mix all the way to 100% so that you get the dry signal and then you get the 100% wet signal here. This is a very common way to blend time-based effects, um, especially uh, it's akin to having an amp with a parallel effects loop, these kinds of things. Usually you would run your rack-mounted effects or your you know um, regular stomp box type effects with 100% wet uh, when you run it in a parallel effects loop. So this is the first thing that's going to happen. Now you have like a one-to-one -one ratio between your dry and your wet signal right there. And so if you want to bring down the level of the reverb, so how much reverb is blended in with your regular amp sound, you would use the level knob. So for example, if I bring this way down, you can see that the reverb is starting to disappear. So I'll use, a again, I'll use this uh, cavern, and we'll just set it to some obnoxious level. And you can hear that when at 0 dB, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Pretty dense. And if I pull this down, and if I keep pulling down the level, you'll hear that the reverb keeps blending further and further into the background. Okay, And you'll notice that the cool thing is that as you bring this you know, up, it's just like almost like your mix when you're running in series, but again, you get this really nice way to level things out. Now, again, with the bypass mode and mute in, if you bypass this effect, so let's say I bring this back to zero. Okay, if you bypass the effect, you're not going to get any, you know, volume jumps, as opposed to if you use the through right here huge volume jump. Yikes. Okay. So again, do the mute in or the mute out. Now, the difference between mute in and mute out for a time-based effect in parallel is mute in functions very much the same as mute effects in, where any signal going into the block will be muted once the block is bypassed, but anything exiting the block will still spill over. You get a trail, so to speak. So again, if I play a chord, Bypass, get a nice trail from the reverb. If I do mute out, for example, and I hit the chord, bypass, mutes that trail. Both of these um, things, they have their use. Um, both of these bypass modes have their use, uh, depending on you know your, the style of music that you play or maybe you know the set. Um, very common thing is that you know you're hitting the last chord of a song and you don't want any trail. You want it to just like completely shut off. Um, I would definitely recommend using the mute out bypass mode. But if you're doing something where you want some trail happening, then of course you would use the mute in. So now this is with reverbs. So you can do the same thing with delays. So for example, if we put a delay here in series. You're, you're going to run into a lot less, you know, issues with um, than a reverb because, you know, delays are usually being bypassed and turned on. And of course, delays are usually never need to be as loud as the, um, you know, the guitar, the regular guitar signal. So I'm going to reset this channel 
it's gonna be this digital delay defaults to this mix and this level. So. so of course, most users will go, well, if you need the delay to be louder, you pull up the mix. That's a very simple way to do things. And again, you'll notice that this is the mute effects in. So what's gonna happen is of course you get the trails from the delay. If you do mute effects out, you're gonna hear the delay cut off. Okay, I'll do that one more time. So no trails. Uh, so delays in series, usually really easy to dial in. This is totally fine. And again, it's mainly just because most of the time delays are gonna be quieter than the main signal. You can totally mess with the mix. Um, now, uh, you know, another thing that you can do, of course, is you can do the similar thing where you're gonna do that with a reverb. I don't really do that with the delays. It's totally fine to mess, mess with the mix and all that kind of stuff. Now, the thing that I do wanna point out is most of my presets, my delays are also running in parallel. And um, the main reason why, of course, is um, a lot of times I just personally prefer that my delays don't have any reverb on them and my reverbs don't have any delays on them. So I run a lot of my effects in parallel like this, especially time-based effects. This allows me to have a pure, unaffected um, amp signal and then I can just blend in effects on top of that, okay? So uh, again, I go more in depth about this in a previous video, but um, you know this is the main reason why I run my time-based effects in parallel. So. Now with delays in parallel, it's just like the reverbs in parallel I just went over, you wanna run 100% mix, and then you wanna use either the mute in or the mute out. Um, and again, mute in means there will be delay trails, mute out means there will be no delay trails. So here is the delay. Um, let's do something maybe like a uh, dual delay so you can hear two delays going on at the same time. Um, here's a very common kind of like lead delay setting, okay? So we have uh, mute out right now means there's no delay trails. And if that's too much delay, again, don't pull back the mix, pull down the level. Okay, and again, because I'm using mute out, if I bypass that as the echoes are happening, it's gonna cut them off. Now, if you want the spillover, of course, do mute in. Okay, so as you can see, the delays are still trailing as I bypass. So the really simple heuristic again is for time-based effects running in parallel, use one of these two. For time-based uh, time effects running in series, use one of these two. And with the reverb, that you know, 50% with 3dB thing is a pretty useful setting for reverbs um, in doing that. All right, so last but not least, an, one other common thing that I see with um, leveling out a preset in terms of volume issues, of course, is let's hypothetically say that you have a preset that's going to be, you know, something like an intro, verse, chorus, and then bridge, okay? So, and then uh, let's say you have like a, I'll put in parentheses, normal volume, and then maybe the verse is quieter, and then the chorus is louder. And then maybe the bridge is back to normal volume. All right, so let's just hypothetically say you're gonna use the, the same amp sound throughout the entire thing, but you're gonna run it, you need to you know, turn up or turn down certain sections in your preset to get them to be louder or softer. So again, a very common thing that I see is people are like using multiple amp channels, pulling the level up and down depending on the amp channel, and then you might ha run into some bypassing issues. Maybe they're using filter blocks to turn on and off between sections. It's, uh, that can be really cumbersome. That can be really hard to keep track of, and it's hard to adjust those things on the fly. So um, all the Axe Effects units, the FM9 as well, have this great feature called Scene Levels right here. 
So in the scene levels, what uh, this allows you to do is each scene, you can adjust the volume up or down with these sliders 20 dB in either direction. So um, I don't foresee people would need to go to that extreme, but you know, bumping a section up or pulling a section down by three to five dB can really help. Okay, so the first thing that uh, we're gonna do is that, for example, the intro right here, let's just say is gonna be our normal volume. Okay, and then let's say that now we're in our verse, we need it to be quieter. So we're in scene two, and then we're just gonna pull that down. Maybe let's just say 3 dB. Again, every user is gonna be different, depends on the song, depends on the band, the style of music. But you'll notice right away, scene one, you'll notice that it's right around unity. And then when I go to scene two, much quieter. And again, you can pull this down even more. I'll just pull down 5 dB just for so you can see that there's a big difference. Now let's say again in scene three is the chorus, so we want it to be louder. We can crank this up by 5 dB. Now, again, your mileage may vary. Um, depends on the music, song, etc. But now scene one is normal volume. Scene two is a quieter volume. And in scene three is a louder volume. Okay, so this allows you to build any sound you want in each section, and then all you need to do is just pull these sliders up and down depending on it, and you can spend some time either in rehearsal or when you're dialing in your presets at home, um, pulling these up and down, and then of course you wanna save them. Now this is a really super useful feature that allows you to level out different sections of your presets to be louder or quieter. Now this doesn't only apply to presets that are based on a song. Of course, if you have, let's say, you know, uh, a clean crunch rhythm and lead sound, this can be also very, very useful. So for example, let's say scene one was my clean sound and then maybe scene two um, I'm using a drive pedal to, you know, add a little bit of grit to this. So let's do, I don't know, um, Tube Screamer, okay? So it'll be off in the clean sound, get a little bit of a crunch here, turn the drive on, and then let's say in my rhythm sound, I'm gonna use something like the, uh, maybe the, BB preamp, oops, didn't want to do that. Uh, let's go back to Tube Screamer for, for channel A right here. And then in the rhythm sound, we're gonna to go to channel B and I'm gonna use the BB preamp. And so we have this sound. Okay, and then maybe our lead sound, we just want that same sound, but louder, okay? so. This allows you to level out your presets without having to mess too much with the actual blocks. So for example, this sound. And then when I go to the crunch sound. Now if I find that that's too loud, as you can see, it's going a little bit over. I can just pull that down just a hair. And then if I go back to scene one. So the cool thing is this allows you to just build the sound and then level it out at the back end using that output block. And then now if we go to scene three, which is our rhythm sound, it's a little bit louder. So maybe I wanna pull that down just a hair. I'm also using a different pickup on the guitar. And then let's say this is, since this is our lead sound right here, I want that to actually be louder than everything else. So we'll crank that up by three dB. So here's our lead sound. So again, very useful to help level out presets, especially if they're different sounds as opposed to different sections of songs. All right, so that's gonna do it for this preset and this video. Um, if you guys need any help, one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations or sessions, feel free to reach out directly to me. If there's any topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to leave a comment in comment below this video or any of the other videos or reach out to me directly. Other than that, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.